Hey everybody, welcome back or welcome if you are new. We are working in the kitchen today. Finally, I can finally say that. I'm so excited y'all. Summer has been so chaotic and I just haven't been able to dedicate, you know, filming food content for you guys. So we are back at it. I'm gonna work on a couple things today and I'm gonna share supper with you guys. So come hang out and join me in the kitchen. Okay, I'm gonna get started on the banana bread first. This is my absolute favorite banana bread recipe. I've been using it for a long time. I will make sure to have it linked down below for you guys. I do use um, avocado oil in mine and I really like it. So go ahead and I'm just gonna mix everything together and then I'll get it put in my air fryer toaster oven. I have it preheating right now. It's at 350 and I'm just letting it preheat while I'm mixing the batter together. One thing that helps me a lot with working in a small space is putting stuff up as I go. Clean as you go. So 
sometimes with this batter, I've noticed that there will be like flower bubbles and it's really hard for me to get them out. I've used a whisk, you know, I've used a spatula like this. So one thing I like to do with this recipe is take my immersion blender and blend it up really smooth just so I know that I won't have any of those hidden flower chunks in there. That way it will be two perfect loaves. While the banana bread is in the oven, I'm gonna go ahead and mix together one of our favorites. This has quickly become a weekly staple for us. They are so easy, simple ingredients, and it only takes a couple minutes to put together. Um, oatmeal balls, a lot of people call them energy oatmeal balls. We just call them oatmeal balls here. Winston knows them as oatmeal balls, and he actually eats these. Um, so it is quick oats, mini chocolate chips, honey, and some peanut butter. I have tried this recipe with natural peanut butter and I just don't like it the same. The consistency is not the same. It won't, you know, form into balls, in my opinion, the same. So I'm just using regular peanut butter, um, but I will make sure to have the recipe that I'm using linked down below. But it is so simple. Just mix everything together in a big bowl and then we'll get them balled up and I just set them in the fridge and they literally do not last long. Like. They last a couple days here in this house because we love them. So you definitely wouldn't even have to do these in balls if you didn't want to. You could just, you know, press it down in a, you know, a dish and then cut it out once they cool down. But for quick and easy grab and go, I definitely, you know, like to do it this way because we can just open the fridge up and grab one out. If you notice that your hands are getting a little sticky, I just spray a little bit of, just a little bit of oil on them. But like I said, these are a weekly staple for us and these go quick, quick in my house. And you could definitely change it, change up the ingredients. You know, you could do some more add-ins. Keeping it simple. And y'all know if I can get Winston to eat something like this, then mom win for me. Okay, it's time to go ahead and start the dough for supper tonight. So I'm using 
I found this soft, soft and fluffy Italian loaf recipe and I've used it for loaf. I've used it for buns. I've used it for cinnamon rolls. I've used this recipe alone for everything. I absolutely love it. It is literally the softest and fluffiest recipe, like dough recipe I've ever had. So I'm going to go ahead and get it going in my bread machine. I have already bloomed my yeast, which is just warm water, the yeast, and the sugar that it calls for in the recipe. I'm going to go ahead and add that in. And then I'm using avocado oil. I have used olive oil for this recipe as well. Both come out good. And you definitely can do this without a bread machine. Just me. Um, I have shared how to do like bread without a bread without a bread machine, and I'll find that video and have it linked down below for you guys. Um, but y'all know I love my bread machine, and even though we're in an RV, still had to bring it, and I have used it a lot. And then I'm going to add in the salt and then just get it going and let it run its cycle. Since the living room is in the kitchen and the kitchen's in the living room, I'm going to have to do a voiceover for the rest of this because Winston is watching TV. But the dough cycle is almost done in the bread machine, so I'm going to go ahead and cook up my meat. I don't even think I told y'all what I was making for supper, but I'm doing like pizza pockets. So, of course, you can add any and every kind of pizza topping that you want for yours. I'm just choosing to do some ground turkey and I'm going to add some pizza sauce to it and do a little bit or do like a cheese stick because we had some cheese sticks that I needed to use up. Winston has been on a cheese stick kick and now he's off of it and so I've got some in the fridge that needed to be used and so it actually ended up turning out perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and cook that meat and add the pizza sauce and then I will take my dough and divide it up. So this recipe, when I do this recipe to make like a loaf of bread, I normally can get two full loaves out of this one batch. So I'm dividing it in two and then I took each half and divided it into fours. I did end up having two pieces left over, but I did six total for the pizza pockets. So I'm just gonna get them divided up and I just kind of press them out and then I add one cheese stick to each piece and then I add a little bit of that turkey and then I just, you know, fold them up and roll them over and then I'll get them all put onto a pan. Once I got all of the pockets filled, I just covered that tray with a towel and let it sit and do a 30 minute final rise. About 15 minutes before they were gonna be baked, I went ahead and preheated my toaster oven air fryer. I baked mine at 350 and I don't have like a time for you guys. It's really just gonna depend on how thick, you know, how big or little your pockets are. 
but I always try to check it with an internal temperature. I try to pick like the thickest one and poke it only in the bread because you could get two different, you know, internal temperatures if you're poking it in the cheese and the meat versus poking it in the bread itself. But a good internal temperature for like fully cooked, beautiful bread is anywhere from 190 to 200 degrees. So that's kind of my go-to. So I just keep an eye on it and just check it to make sure that they are done. But you could definitely add some garlic butter on these before or even after you pulled them out of the oven um, but we were getting hangry these took a little bit longer than I thought they would and so we were just ready to eat but y'all Winston said that these were delicious and I needed to make them again they were really good you guys thanks so much for spending some time with me in the kitchen I had so much fun sharing this with you guys as well and I cannot wait to share more food content I'm ready to get back at it I hope y'all enjoyed today's video and I will see y'all in the next one bye guys